finally comes home and finds all the Zeon soldiers in his home. Hey, that's my home. That's, what oh. are you doing here? Yeah, that that really drove home Whoa. a lot of the uh, kind of the themes of the show. You have been occupied. Yeah, that, that whole war idea. We just came here because there was no, this was abandoned. What's yep. your deal, kid? <laughs> Kind of see it from both sides, kind of rather nicely there. Yeah. But uh, it is, you know, it's, it's a, it, it does feel very violating. Yeah, and his, his mom's trying not to stir up too much trouble mm -hmm. for everybody else because they have to live with the occupation. Yep. And uh, he really has to leave after that. <laughs> I mean, if he stayed, she'd be in all sorts of mm -hmm. trouble. I love that sequence where he has, he's hiding the gun. Oh, yeah. The uh, tension. Oh, the tension is great. And, and that whole idea that, again, he doesn't want to kill anybody. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. But his hand is being he's, forced. He's, he's ready. Yep. Um, to go from such a quiet kid, basically, to being willing to shoot somebody. Yeah, that that is a transformation. Mm. Of course, yeah, it's a, part of it is that growing up in necessity. Yep, yep. Hard choices. Let's see, I know this piece has moved down here. <laughs> and this piece somehow fits in there, but I don't really look yeah. at that piece. Ah, there we go. So I have a problem. Oh. Which is this. I have this piece. And unfortunately this happened to it. Oh. So one of the arms broke off. Uh probably in shipping. Mm. And unfortunately I need to that would be a plug legs onto that, like a real glue. So I'm gonna have to, yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, super glue that at some point. Why don't you know that they have super glue here? Which was a uh, an oversight on my part. So I will have a an incomplete mobile suit at some point. Here. I suppose that's something that uh, I should probably add to my kits in the future. Yeah. For just the, the scenario where something has to be glued. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, you can put these together without glue. Which oh yes. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. That's one of those questions is uh, kind of part of the, the design question is, okay, um, do you glue it together when you're done with it? I've never glued a, a model kit just because I like being able to take it back apart and, and tweak it and fix it. Um, but that is totally a choice. And of course, when it's glued, it's... It, uh, it fits together a little more nicely. Not going to go anywhere. As long as you don't get it into the joints that need to articulate. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So now I get to put some stickers on here. C2. I have no idea oh, where stickers. they go. Tricky stickers. Well, that one certainly goes there. There's a big black spot. A uh, big orange spot. C2. So when I was much younger, there mm. used to be a number of model kits that were snapped together, mm. and they were very simple, mm -hmm. so a kid of my very young age <laughs> could snap them together following the instructions, mm -hmm. and at some point I, I moved on to doing the glued ones, but I always had a warm spot in my heart for the ones that were snapped together because the mm. design required them to do more work design-wise, mm -hmm. to make these things uh, uh, stay together. Yeah. And so so I, I kind of miss seeing a lot of the, the kits that I used to see as a kid mm -hmm. in airplanes. Um, airplanes, a lot of them mostly, uh, mm. and uh, they had some that were uh, motorcycles, cool. spacecraft, things like that. But getting back into the Gundam kits, mm. It, it reminds me a lot of that. Yeah, Adam Savage has lamented on several occasions the um, loss of model kit culture. Hmm. The fact that uh, you know there used to be a lot of opportunities to uh, to buy and assemble model kits, but other than some specialty options, there's really not much out there. It's a shame. Yeah. You know, and this is. This is an important way to learn um, how to make stuff, how to assemble things. It gives you a, a, a much better grasp of, of three-dimensional mm. um, uh, uh, assessment, control, mm -hmm. motor skill, fine motor skills. Yeah. And you get a better um, 
appreciation of the thing you're modeling to. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can take a, a space shuttle and put it together and realize, oh, look at where the engines are. <laughs> now look at how they're oriented. Yeah, there, there must have been a reason why they did it that mm -hmm. way. Hmm. That'll be enough. That was one of the fun things with um, another type of model uh, mm. that I've played around with is the Metal Earth model. Yeah, those are amazing. And you get a small degree of, of, of understanding of structural design just mm. by working with these kind of things because you realize there are certain tension points that mm. have to hold and others that are more cosmetic. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a range of architectures, uh, vehicles, uh, you know, helicopters, uh, mm. uh, cars, uh, trains, ta uh, you know, uh, bugs, musical instruments, mm. uh, famous uh, aircraft, spacecraft, uh, all, all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. and, and you really get a feel for how to um, work in uh, a vision of three dimensions mm -hmm. and how to create a, uh, 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 something from just plans mm -hmm. and, and bring it into being. Yeah. There's a lot to be said for that. It really is. C5. What am I missing? C5, you've sunk my battleship. <laughs> See, there's certainly a decal that goes out there somewhere, but I have missed that step. And there's those. Following instructions is another good one. Indeed, oh, yeah. I can't do this without doing that. Yeah, it helps to order the mind in very helpful ways. There doesn't seem to be a... Let's go with that. Where would that go? And the PC Little, tin. Maybe it goes on there. Um, do -do -do -do. <laughs> decal, decal, decal. Where would that arrow go? Oops. Not there. Not there. Not there. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun when you're get when 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 you're building these, mm -hmm. um, and it gives you a sense of accomplishment. Yeah, I did that. Totally. Um, uh, unlike, uh, I, I I think a lot of uh, culture has gone to oh why should I build something or design something mm -hmm. or create something when I could just buy it cheap? Yeah. Well, yeah, you can, but the excitement of building it yourself mm -hmm. is quite often more entertaining yeah and longer lasting and that sense of accomplishment more rewarding than mm -hmm. just buying it mm -hmm. I mean the guy who who builds his his car from from parts <laughs> from scratch you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. uh, or and remodels you know mm. a car is gonna have a lot more sense of, of understanding of how everything works together mm -hmm. Than the person who just bought it. Yep. Because they've 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 got the resources <laughs> to do so. Now there's nothing wrong with buying it. No. I mean, but it, you really feel that you know it inside and out when mm -hmm. you put your hands on just about every part to get it to where it is. Yeah. Exactly. All right. And there, for lack of a better word, is a flat minus the leg. Wow! So there's oh well, and yeah. It's hard to see. So there's another flat minus a leg. The nice thing is this actually transforms. So it actually has a flying mode, and you have to pop off the little uh, thing there. But then you just sort of fold this leg up there. Let's see that? Leg folds, it folds back. and then the head folds forward and sort of flies in that formation. Mm. So there's sort of a jet-like cool. mode for the flat, which is kind of nice. Obviously, uh, <laughs> uh, obviously, Sid Mead doesn't think too much in terms of aerodynamics of, of uh, jet flying. He didn't want this to look like a 
fighter jet the way some other Gundams do. So now Sid Mead. Yep. Who, who is this Sid Mead guy? Sid Mead's a designer. And, uh, I guess an industrial designer. Um, he, but he has done a lot of work in Hollywood. So he did the design work in Blade Runner. And the design work for Tron. Oh, both movies that are Tron. incredible. Mm-hmm. And he did the design work for... What else? Um, Alien, I believe. Wow, what hasn't he done? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Well, he said it's one of those things where just, you know, because he worked on this one thing, then he got a call on this other thing and this other thing. So he worked on those. And so he worked on, uh, so he was called in to work on Turn A Gundam. And uh, actually, that's because a few years earlier, he'd been called in to work on Space Cruiser Yamato. Wow. So on one of the adaptations of Yamato, I believe, he changed that around a bit. He um, uh, kind of redesigned the Yamato to be a little more, for lack of a better word, realistic. Hmm. Um, sort of tweaked the design in certain ways. And because he'd done that, they asked him to work on Turn A Gundam. And so he did a bunch of the designs for that. Wow. Now, Turn A Gundam also has some other, um, other mecha in there from other Gundam series. Hmm. But in, in terms of the original uh, mecha, they were all from from uh, Sid Mead Designs. Well, and there's another um, Japanese designer on there, but Sid worked with him. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Interesting. So doesn't, oh, actually, that does fold up if you kind of play with it a little bit. That's quite doable. You just fold that that way. Yeah, that's fine. That's pretty clever. Oops, but it can pop out. Yeah, those characters in Gundam sure do have a... quite the experience. And it's interesting, too, because the show deals with... You really feel the ongoing story of Gundam. You, you feel the ongoing war about how this... You know, this doesn't just feel like um, the good guys off in isolation fighting all the bad guys. They really feel like they're part of a larger uh, army, a yeah. military. Even even though the military doesn't provide them with a lot of support, um, they still have a presence, and eventually they start utilizing them more as resource as they as they gain their mm. their worthiness. But of course, they still keep them as a um, uh, what was it a red herring or a distraction yeah. <laughs> for for the enemy. As the enemy focuses on that, that gives them the opportunity to maneuver mm. their other forces. Yep. Another good example of how, you know, that's, you know, like in a lump it, that's kind of the way the military works a lot of the time, you know. It may not be fair, but it's the best way to win. <laughs> there's the right way, there's the wrong way, there's the military way. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you see all the normal military uh, complaints and all that stuff. Particularly <laughs> from Slegger, he's a fun character. Slegger Law, the pilot. Let's see, Slegger. He was a blonde uh, pilot who comes in about two thirds of the way through. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. Right. Yeah, he's <laughs> a little bit, uh, puts the women on edge there <laughs> with his forwardness. Yeah. And, uh, but eventually he comes through. And yeah. Well, it's the interesting thing about Slegger is he's very forward. Um, he, he doesn't, um, he, yeah. He, 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 he never goes beyond, you know, asking. You know, he never touches anyone inappropriately. Yeah. He just says, hey, do you want to, basically. Yeah. Um, it, it much more direct than the characters are used to. But he you know, he has a certain amount of honor. And oh, someone yeah. developed a crush on him. Sure did. That was... Uh, Poor Mirai. Was Mirai. Yeah. yeah. She really liked him. Well, he Poor defended girl. her. Yeah. With her a dip of a fiancé. That was then, this is now, life has changed. Uh, but he seemed to always go back to his parents. It seemed like he had never mm, really yeah. so to sort of cut the umbilical cord there. No. He, he, he didn't realize she was asking him to take his own responsibility and make mm -hmm. his own decisions. Um, so that that's, that's a maturity level that I think she was mm. forced into uh, much sooner than he was. And yeah. she wasn't ready to... 
make that change. But he came through in the end. He was a good guy. Yeah. He just yeah. hadn't matured to the level where she mm -hmm. was. And, I mean, let's not forget, I mean, Mirai isn't as young as the others. She's, uh, I think, 23 um, as of the, the original series. And so, you know, she, she's not a teenager anymore. No. But she's definitely, you know, young. Um, and, and, you know, forced into a combat situation. Uh, but let's, let's not also forget, Mirai volunteers. Yeah. You know, in that first episode, she says, well, I can pilot a freighter. If that's any help. Impressive. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. sure, you know. <laughs> you we don't have pilot. any other pilots. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so she has that sort of intestinal fortitude that, um, guts. that really helped. That, um, that Sayla has to learn to mm. a good extent. Poor Sayla. Yeah. He's forced to pilot some of the, the really tough... The, uh, the G armor partway through, which, by the way, Tomino hated. <laughs> it was a transparent attempt to sell more toys. Um... <laughs> And, uh, in fact, it was so bad that, if I recall correctly, you will not see the G-Armor in the movies. Oh. He edited it completely out of the movie version, because <laughs> he thought it was so silly. Um, but yeah, I mean, Sailor has to learn how to, how to pilot and how to do all these things that she's just not used to doing. Mm. Um, but again, remember, she's, you know, she's part of the military, but she's not a fighter. She's not on those, you know, she, she's not part of the, the normal front-line soldiers. So this situation is very new to her. Yeah, she was she was brought up in a more formal, yeah. uh, some sort of a more uh, royal kind of class. Mm -hmm. As you will see if you watch Gundam: The Origin. Oh, yes. Gundam: The Origin. Now that's come out when? Uh, so it's just coming out now as you record this. Episodes are being made and released uh, very slowly. They go. I think nine months between releases. Oh, wow. Um, so they're doling it out nice and yeah, gradually. Yeah, I think there are six episodes planned, um, all telling kind of the backstory of those characters. So the first oh, nice. episode starts with um, Char, a bit old, and Sela, a few years younger than him, and all of the stuff that happens around, oh, Zeon Daikun, and all that fun stuff. That should be entertaining because I always wondered what their backstory was because mm -hmm. it, it, it seemed so intriguing. I wanted more, more. <laughs> but they only doled out a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Oh. Yep. To, to dive into that should be interesting. Yeah, there's definitely some really fun story stuff there you get to find out about. So this is interesting. I only used about half of my... What, you got spare parts? Spare parts. So this must be meant for other model kits as well. Interesting. Spare uh, now I yeah, feel spare PVC. The 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 my PC board is a very flexible yes. kind of soft rubber mm -hmm. with joints. I'd imagine that uh, with articulating parts, mm. they might give way sooner than the parts that are solid fixed. Mm. Uh, is that uh, well? They're designed for the, kind of yeah. They're, they're designed for the joints. So the idea is, if you um, all of these leg and arm joints and shoulder uh, joints and all these things um, are joined with these sort of quasi PVC plastic, um, and the idea is, if you have hard plastic in with a softer plastic, it gives a little bit. So you can insert them, remove them without scraping the plastic, things like that. So this is kind of a grip on those hard plastic parts. Made in Japan. Hmm. Bondi 1996? No, I'm sorry, 1986? No, 1998. 1996, 1999. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So this must be a an update to one of their original designs. This one is... does not have a copyright notice on it. Interesting. Remember, we watched a little bit, a, a clip a while ago about them actually making model kits. Oh, it's incredible. Yep. I'd have to squirt in the plastic to the molds, make the molds, and then they just stamp them out. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And you think that, that one Mobile Suit Gundam from, gosh, Almost well, 35 years ago now, has spawned just this 
a, a dozen TV shows, you know, movies, OVAs, this huge universe. A whole of universe, materials. yeah. It's pretty amazing. Uh, pieces are starting to come together now. Nice. I think my next thing is going to be to uh, start painting these things up. I want to. Now that's an interesting that. skill set. Mm. Recently, we talked with somebody a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. He talked about how he he paints up Gundam model kits, which is pretty cool. One of the nice things I should point out uh, on model in these model kits is on the back of the sheet, they actually give you the colors. So on the oh. back of the instructions, they, they, they will show you what the colors are there. Oh, wow. If you want to paint it up. Nice. So, and you can even see in there, um, it was hard to, to see, um, they'll give you kind of the, the RGB values as percentages. Um, Ooh, so if you need to match it with a paint that you yeah. can't get in your area? Mm hmm So I'm sure you can translate that pretty easily. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty nice that they, they give you exactly what, what that is. So yeah, so we, we talked to a model builder. He has, an, uh, he has an airbrush and all sorts of really neat stuff. And he actually makes these for the, uh, we're the, just, the hobby. We're right. just scratching the surface as exactly. beginners in comparison to him. He, yeah. He's gone as far as uh, doing the, uh, the, the spray, spray vents and, uh, yeah, competitions. Yeah. Yeah, he's, it's pretty serious stuff. And of course, the next level after this, and after that, rather, would be building your own custom mobile suits based on uh, just your own design. That would be fun. Ooh. Is that is that possible? Oh, sure. How do you do that? Well, these are all interchangeable. Interchangeable. I can put that head on that that guy, and you can uh, add new parts. You can change things around. You can cut things off and glue things on. You can do pretty much whatever you want. Yeah. And it's a matter of looking at the model kits and deciding what parts to use from which one and what you want to modify. The mashups. Yeah. Really cool mashups out there. So yeah, Gundam's a pretty, pretty fun one.